Okay. I have the clicker. Okay. Hi, guys. Hi, I'm Kamiko from The Budget Mom. Come along with me as I strive to live a life I love on a budget that I can afford. Today we're going to be talking about my budget by paycheck method. And when she reached out to me to talk to you guys about budgeting, saving, and debt, that's a lot of information to take in. They're kind of three separate subjects. But my, me my budgeting method, it really incorporates all the three. So I thought we could discuss just that today. So here, who here actually wants to learn, honestly wants to learn how to budget and really figure out how to tackle their financial goals? Okay, so a better financial future. That's what we want to get to. So I'm calling this budget to freedom. And the reason I call it is freedom is because everyone talks about financial freedom. And in my method, each letters of the word freedom represent a different step to my method. Now the first step is find your why. And if you watch me on Instagram, you know how passionate I am about my why. My why is my son, James. He just turned six this year, and he was that aha moment, the first thing in my life where I felt like I had purpose. So a little backstory on how I got here. Back in 2011, I just graduated college. I came out with over $80,000 in debt. 33,000 of that was student loans. The rest was credit cards. And that is a huge load to come out with. Not knowing how to pay it off, not knowing how to ma manage my finances, I was completely lost. Then my son was born. And it was at that moment where I knew it was no longer about wanting to manage my finances and wanting to do better. I had no choice. I had to. I had this, this little boy who completely depended on me and it changed my entire life. And if you hear me talk about him on my Instagram, most of the time I'm crying. <laughs> and I'm very emotional about it. That's what your why should be to you. It should be so important to you that it lights a fire under you. You should feel emotion when you're, when you're talking about your purpose on why you want your financial life to be better. It's something where giving up is not an option. So whether that is your child or your kids, whether that's the ability to travel more without putting anything on your credit card or going into debt, whether that's being able to seize opportunities in your life without having to worry about money, all those things can represent a why. It doesn't have to be a specific thing or a goal. It can be a feeling. Maybe, you know, I was that mom sitting at the kitchen table with my one-year-old next to me, figuring out how I was going to put food on the table how I was going to pay my minimum payments. I didn't want that life for him. And so I had to tackle this, this financial world that, and it's funny, I graduated with a finance degree. But what people don't realize is just because you're in those services, it doesn't mean that personal finance is a part of it. Budgeting, debt, saving money is usually not talked about. It's not where the money is for them. They can't earn anything by teaching those things. And so a lot of time it's dropped by the wayside. So when you're figuring out your why, it has to be something you truly care about. Your why is what's going to get you through it. The next thing is research and awareness. Research, everyone hates me for this, but it's tracking your spending knowing where every dollar of your money is going, and it sucks. And a lot of my readers call this a slap in the face moment, where it's like, oh my gosh, I spent over $100 on coffee last month. That could have went for paying for a vacation with my kid. That could have went to paying off my student loans. That could have been one step closer to a better life for me, but instead it went to coffee. And a lot of time when you spend your money, it's like $2 here, $4 here, uh, it's five bucks. It's not gonna make a huge difference in my journey, but it adds up. And for me, I have a personal preference on my tracking my spending, and I'll be showing that you can see it in the brochure. I use the highlighter method, I am a manual person. So what you might be wondering, my budget by paycheck method and Dave Ramsey. Who knows Dave Ramsey? And who knows the baby steps? I tried it, I hated it, I failed at it. So I thought I was doing it wrong. 
And for years, I tried to stick with it. I tried to stay with the budget. But then I realized I had to do it my way. Your way. What works for you. Doesn't matter what everyone, anyone else in the world, it doesn't matter what financial experts are telling you. It's your way. That's the right way. It's being at peace at the end of the night, putting, being able to put your head on your pillow and feeling secure and safe with your finances. Now, if that means your emergency fund has to be $15,000, like it was mine, then that's what it's going to take. It doesn't mean that you can't pay off debt at the same time. You can do both. But a lot of financial experts say you do one or the other. It's your way. So research and awareness, tracking your spending, figuring out where your dollars are going. Once you are aware of where your money is going, then in your mind you have a realistic image of your spending and you can start cutting costs. So that's the second step. Eliminate and reduce. It has to do with cutting those expenses. A lot of time my readers say, Miko, I was getting a $4.99 charge on my statement from some app that my son downloaded that's been going on for five years and I didn't even know. It happens. Or someone hacked my bank account, but I didn't know until two weeks later when I checked my checking account. Just random little charges here and there. Or it's, um, I'm paying $88 for the gym, but last month they charged me $129. It's those little things that you need to be aware of. Every dollar counts in this journey. Every dollar. And once you realize that, you'll start to see how much it adds up. And so it's about cutting those expenses you no longer need so you can reach your financial goals faster. It's about how much do you really, really want this? And for me, my son, he's that important to me. That's how much I wanted it. So I cut everything out of my life that wasn't a necessity so I could pay off my debt. So I could take him to McDonald's for an ice cream cone without worrying about if I had money in my checking account to cover it. That's real life. And that's what's happening a lot of times with my readers. It's embarrassing to share, it's uncomfortable to share, but unless someone says it out loud to let someone else in the world know that they're not alone, change isn't going to happen. Change doesn't happen if you stay silent. So establish a budget. My budget's weird, I'm not gonna lie. Most of the time people put down their categories on a piece of paper, they assign a dollar amount, and then they spend the rest of their lives trying to stick to that limit and not go over. They fail, they go back to that budget, and they said, next month, I'm gonna get it next month. It's not working. You need to tweak, you need to personalize. What I've learned on my financial journey is that budgeting you creating a budget, it's the most personal thing you will ever create. It is the only thing that is a true reflection of your life. Your budget, where your money is going, it tells you what's important to you, even if you don't know what that is. Where is the majority of your money going? That's what's important. That's where you're, that's where you're choosing to spend it. So obviously it has some type of importance to you. And so, Establishing your budget, it's paying your bills online. Now, I do use the cash envelope method. So my budget by paycheck method, a lot of, a lot of my readers say, well, you do the cash envelope, so it's kind of like Dave Ramsey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of is, kind of is. But what I tell my readers, I'm not gonna force you to do anything. I'm not gonna tell you there is no magical number. There is no magical percent of what you should be budgeting, what you should be saving. There is no thousand dollar emergency fund. These are the steps, this is the process. You do it in your own way. You do it with the amounts and the limits you're comfortable with. My budgeting method is manual. I do not believe in using electronic pro programs for your budget. Kind of crazy. A lot of people think it's a lot of hard work, but it changed my life doing it that way. Most of the biggest aha moments that I found in my financial journey is because I decided to put pen to paper. I was doing the work. I wasn't plugging numbers into a program and letting it do the work for me. I was doing the work, and then all of a sudden, doing that work is what made my finances exciting for me. It was no longer like, crap, I gotta work on my budget this morning. Oh, I don't wanna look at my bank account today. I wake up, I wanna check my checking account. I wanna see what's going on, because it's like, yes, 50 more dollars just went to my savings. $50 closer. It's those little things, it's those aha moments. Like, 
it took me many, many years to figure out why my budget wasn't working. One of them had to do with me putting myself in a box and not allowing myself to be creative and be my own self with my finances. But a lot of it had to do with other little things, and we'll get into that a little later on. Your debt plan. <coughs> this is a scary time. This is, the, this is the stuff that people are like, I don't want to see it. I don't want to deal with it. If I ask them, what's your interest rate on all of your debts? How much a month? How much daily are you getting charged for interest? How much do you owe? When is it due? Can it be reduced? Can it be negotiated? Can it be consolidated? How do you figure out what to do with it? What are your options? Do you use the avalanche method? Do you use the snowball method? Now, a lot of people, Dave Ramsey, he says snowball method, gazelle intensity. You pound out those small debts first and then you move to the next one. Me, I'm a finance nerd. I love my numbers. And once I saw how much I was paying towards interest, it was not an option, wasn't even a thought to me. When I saw that I could save over $15,000 just in interest payments, here's something. When I started paying off my debt, my, my hardest debt, I had a $28,000 balance on a credit card that had 23% interest. Sleep with that at night, okay? <laughs> Try to figure out how you're gonna pay your, your kid's school clothes and his sporting events costs with an interest payment like that. Six, over $600 a month, gone, poof, into thin air. But here I was being told to pay off my smallest debt first that had 0% interest. Wasn't working for me. I chose the avalanche method. And if you, if you are familiar, I also have a YouTube. I show you this miraculous tool that puts it side by side. You list out your debts. How much do you save in interest with the avalanche method? How much do you save with the snowball method? It will blow your mind. And so what's your plan of attack for your debt? Organize your savings. Prioritize your goals. When I ask people, what are you saving for? A rainy day, just in case I need it, in case my house blows up, in case my furnace goes out, in case my washer and dryer stops working. Emergency fund, OK. But what about what you want? What about the things in your life that make you happy, that sometimes come up and you don't have the cash to pay for it? So we use a, debt or a credit card. We use debt to fund the things that we want in our life. That's what freedom meant to me. I wanted to do the things and experience those opportunities without, with my son without debt. Now, I have a huge, crazy goal to pay for my first house with cash. I'm currently on a savings goal to save $400,000 because I'm terrified of debt now. Do I believe that using a credit card is bad? Absolutely not. If you have a, re 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 a rewards card and you can get those points, you can get those free miles, go for it all day long. Mm -hmm. But you better be disciplined enough to pay it off every single month. Me, I'm honest with myself. I am not good with credit cards. I'm a spender at heart. I'm the type of person you swipe a card, I'm like, ah, eh, pay with it later. Take care of it later. My paycheck comes, it's gone. I don't pay it off later, even though I like to tell myself that. I'm the type of person I can't have credit cards. Someone else out there, some of my readers are very good, and they travel the world for free using rewards points. It's amazing. I'm just not that way. So you have to be honest with yourself, with your debt. Can you honestly be disciplined enough to pay it off? Figure out your savings goals, because that's where, that's where your money needs to go. Maintain and succeed. So there's my son, whose name is James. He just started wrestling. This little boy changed my life. And I'm hoping by discovering your why and what matters to you, because it goes beyond, let's step outside budgeting and finance for a second. Your why trickles into everything else that you do. Are you wanting to get a job promotion? Are you wanting to tackle another opportunity in your life? Are you struggling? Are you feeling depressed? Are you feeling defeated, beaten down? Are you feeling like the people around you aren't supporting you? Your why will get you through it. So it's that passion, it's that motivation, it's that dedication, all of this stuff. That's what your why is going to give you. That's what needs to be established before you even open a piece of paper to tackle your budget. This is what my expense tracker looks like. 
this is how I track your spending. This is what makes you aware. It's how you identify where your money is going, every penny. From here, this is where you make change. Oh, okay, I wasn't too bad in September with my food. <laughs> Sometimes a lot bigger, but and I do this too because it keeps me accountable. By sharing my real numbers with my readers, it's like when I stop at McDonald's for a Big Mac, I'm like, dang, I gotta share this with my readers today. Everyone, all 145,000 of my followers are gonna know I went and got a Big Mac today. <laughs> so it makes me accountable. You may not have that accountability, but if your passion is there and your drive is there to truly make a difference in your life, you will start to see this accountability in yourself. So, does this make sense to everybody with the highlighter method? Okay. Eliminate and reduce. The first step in the budgeting process is always tracking your spending. And then you get to like this, where you categorize all of your spending at the end of the month. In September, yeah, so this is last year, I spent $299. I had a $400 budget for my food. This is where you really get to see where the problem areas are in your spending. This is what's gonna give you the categories for your budget. This is how you make a real realistic budget. A lot of people, when they start a budget, they write down categories that they think they're spending. I'm spending money in food, clothing, supplies for my son, gas, fun money, miscellaneous, those type of things. Everyday, everyday, normal type of categories. They wing it, right? This is making a budget off of what you're truly doing with your spending. Not only that, it's gonna tell you what limits you use for your categories. It's no longer just assigning fictional numbers or unrealistic numbers because that's how you fail. You tell yourself, oh, I wanna spend $400 a month on food, when really you're spending anywhere between six and 700. So you go through the month and you try to stick to a $400 limit even though you were really spending 700 and you fail. You do it next month and you fail. And then you're like, okay, crap, budgeting just isn't working for me. No, because you're using a, a number that's not realistic to your life. Now, am I saying that you can't cut a category? You can't cut expenses? Absolutely not. But you cut it in small increments. You want to cut your food budget? Awesome. Do it by $50 for the first month. If you can do that, the next month, maybe bring it down another 25. This is how you reduce your spending. Now, in this also, I have savings. This is gonna tell you where your priorities are. If you're looking at this, you'll see right now that, okay, so 13% of my income that month went to my rent and home. Yeah, having a house is important to me, having somewhere to live. But right under that, 12% went to my savings. That's what's important to me. It's what my money's telling me that's important to me. It's what my spending's telling me. This is going to tell you whether or not your spending is aligning with your goals. Most critical step. You can't even start a budget without this first because it won't be realistic for what's really going on in your life. This is what a budget looks like. You pay your regular bills online. From here, listing out all your bills, when they're due, how much they are. We call these fixed expenses. They don't change very often. They go from month to month. You pay your regular bills online. So you might be asking, Miko, what is the budget by paycheck method? It incorporates three different budgeting methods all in one. It's the calendar method, the cash envelope method, and the paycheck method. I'm a paycheck budgeter. I don't budget once a month. I budget every time I get a paycheck. Sometimes it's a little hard to grasp. One of the reasons I failed for so long, I tried to squeeze myself into a monthly budget when my mind did not work that way. I was paying my bills when I got a paycheck, why the heck was I not budgeting my money when I got a paycheck? I don't know, because someone out there told me I had to do it monthly. So I was listening to the experts. This is the thing where I tell, this is why making it realistic for you, that's what you need to do. That's what I'm doing. A lot of people, a lot of my readers say, oh my gosh, why didn't I think about budgeting by paycheck? Something that you don't even think about because most of the time you're handed a template and it's monthly. So we're talking about my paycheck on December 20th. Here's my income. I pay my bills. I subtract my bills from how much I made. I have something left over. A lot of the time, this is where people go crazy and their spending goes crazy and they're like, where'd my money go? I had this much money after I got done paying my bills, where'd it go? Well, how much do you spend on food? Could you tell me? How much do you spend on fun costs? Could you tell me where that money went? A lot of people are like, no. I had it in my bank account. 
So I spend it, swipe my card. Took my kid to the car or to the park, swipe my card. Got some gas, swipe my card. Me, I use cash envelopes. It makes your budget tangible. Being able to see how much money you have to spend in cash in front of you changed everything for me because I'm a spender at heart. When I went to the grocery store and I'd go pick up soda for my son, I'd open up my cash envelope for my food budget and I'd see I have $20 in there. It's like crap, if I buy this 12 pack of soda, this is how much I'm left until next week. It's not worth the soda, he can drink some water. <laughs> so, what's left after you pay your bills? You do your cash envelopes, which means you go to the, the bank, you pull out cash for your cash envelopes. This is gonna be your lifeline. This is what's gonna allow you to not overspend and, fist and stop saying, well, I don't know where my money went. It went here. And you can see that stuff and what that spending is here, knowing where every dollar is going. From there, I have $886, so I paid my fixed expenses. I paid my variable expenses. Now, variable expenses are what drive people crazy. Those, those expenses that fluctuate up and down every month, your clothing expenses. Maybe one month you spent 150, maybe the next month you spent 200, maybe it's back to school time, August, time to go and get your kids. It's maybe it's $800 that month. But if you have a plan for it, this is where the budget calendar comes in. Having everything written on your calendar, your holidays, your events, your bills, your salon appointments, all of that on a, on a monthly budget calendar, those are the things that you need to include in your budget. I paid my, my fixed expenses, I paid my variable expenses, $886 left over. What do I do with it? Me? I learned very early on some holidays that were kicking my butt. Christmas came around. I didn't have $1,000, what I usually spend on Christmas. I never had that saved up. So what I do, I use my credit card, put it on debt. Tell myself, oh, I'll pay it off with some Christmas cash that I got. Didn't even come close. For years, at least five or six years, I put Christmas on credit cards. Probably why my credit card balance got so high, because I couldn't pay it off. Not anymore. I save, and now it's not in this one, but I save a little bit every month for the things that matter to me, the things that I saw in my life that I was feeling like pressured to use my credit card, pressured to use debt, because I didn't have the money. I save a little bit each month, and then I have the, the cash available when Christmas comes. So for this year, I'll have $800 saved for, in cash for Christmas. I don't have to wake up the next morning after Christmas and be like, oh my God, I just put $800 on my credit card. Who wants to wake up after Christmas morning feeling that way? It sucks. You see your son happy, he got to open a whole bunch of toys, but as mom, we have to live with the guilt of spending. And I think that was one of the hardest things that I had to deal with. Made my son happy, gave him the life I, I wanted to give him and show him, but I had to live with my decisions. I didn't want to anymore. So, saving for the future. Next, what are you trying to do? Your financial goals. Now, some people would say, Miko, I'm trying to pay off debt. I don't want it to go to sinking funds or savings accounts. I want to pay off my debt. Go for it. I'm not here to stop you. If that's what's going to make you feel at peace at night, if that's what's going to make you feel successful with your money, do it. For me, saving for the future was more important. Paying off my debt was next. Now, as you can see, I was working on my student loans here. Oh, goodness, student loans suck. So, <laughs> but I kicked their butt in December. Here's a perfect example of how you save and pay off debt at the same time. You see where my priorities are? More, went, more of my money went towards debt. My spending is telling me what's important, debt. But I still had a little bit I could save. Now some people think $5 a month, where does that get you? $17 a month, where does that get you? It gets you to your goal in very small increments. You do what you can do to get you to where you need to go, even if it's $5. So, debt plan. Everything you need to know to pay off your debt, get it in front of your face. It's scary, and I hated every part of it. But, it's real life. And until you're ready to see it on paper, everything on paper in front of your face, and you're scared of it, you won't be able to tackle it. So you gotta create a plan. Listing out the debts that you owe, your balance, your interest rate, your minimum payments, 
and then you're gonna decide what order you're gonna pay them off. When you're on a debt payment plan journey, you're gonna tackle one debt at a time. The rest of them, you pay the minimum payments to. Whether you decide to pay off the debt that is highest interest rate or the one that has the smallest balance, that's completely up to you. It's what it, what's gonna keep you motivated. Okay, it comes down to saving on interest. Is that what's gonna keep you motivated? Or is it seeing your debt disappear quickly? And that's what the snowball method, you, you see progress fairly quickly because you're paying off that smallest balance first. From there, I write down any extra debt payments that I made past my minimum payments. These minimum payments should be included as bills. You have to pay them every month. They are a fixed expense. You do not get to run away from them, but you can choose how much you do extra. In September, I paid off $13,000 just in September by watching where every dollar was going, by cutting my food budget, literally squeezing every penny that I could because I was fighting for something fighting something that I knew could change my life and my son's life. So this is what your debt payment plan should look like. Organized savings. This is what my sinking funds look like. My cash envelope sinking fund saver. I love my cash envelopes. I like cute. I like being creative. It's bringing that fun element of budgeting and finance into my life. I like artwork. This is what I lean to to make my budget fun. You may not be creative but I guarantee you along the way, you will find things that you get excited about your money. Because I tell you right now, if you're not doing this with your money, you're not putting the best work for your dollars to use. There is more that you can be doing with your money. It can go a lot further to things that really matter to you. For me, it's saving for the future. Here's my, I think, yeah, here's my Christmas sinking fund. <coughs> so this is making you intentional with your money. It's planning ahead. Now, my whole budgeting method is to deter you from using debt. If you're paying off debt, you should not be putting yourself in more debt. But a lot of time when you live paycheck to paycheck, you don't have an option. I want to give you that option. So this is um, organizing your savings and goals. Now, it might not be holidays that you're saving for. Maybe you're saving for a vacation for your family. This is how you do it, a little bit each month. Let's be honest, who can put $8,000 a month towards a vacation to Hawaii in one month? No one. But you be patient. You be a patient spender. You prepare. You plan. And then I'll tell you what, when you do get there, and you're in Hawaii having the time of your life, in the sun, on the beach, you did it all without putting anything on debt. You don't have to go home from a wonderful vacation wondering how you're going to pay it off. Maintain and succeed. Your budget is a reflection of your life, and I know I mentioned that. You update and you tweak. Screw what everyone else says. Doesn't matter. If something isn't working for you, do not be afraid to make changes. And I know a lot of you, when you do, you'll know right away the changes that you need to make. You might just be scared to make them because you feel like it's not the right way, that it's the wrong way. It's not what you heard. It's not what people are telling you. It's your way. That's the right way. It's being at peace at the end of the night, putting, being able to put your head on your pillow and feeling secure and safe with your finances. If you found this video helpful, please share it and don't forget to subscribe.